Folks, I have great news for you. We have vehicles that you've been asking for, the little trucks or the little pickups, right? Yes, and we're doing the world's toughest towing test because what good is a compact pickup if it cannot tow? That's right. We have the 2022 Hyundai Santa Cruz and the 2022 Ford Maverick and a benchmark truck that we're using, which is in a slightly different class, which is a 2021, in this case, Honda Ridgeline all-wheel drive. Stay tuned for a serious towing. Here we are, dude. We are in the Ridgeline about to descend the iGauntlet World Office towing test. That's right, we're establishing a benchmark by using the Ridgeline. The Ridgeline is a larger vehicle than the other two, but it's something that we're very used to. We've towed with this vehicle several times. We have, so as always, I leave the, um, the top of the mountain at 50 miles an hour, and as soon as it goes over the speed limit, which is 60, I'm gonna break it down and slow it down to 50 and count brake applications. That is correct. You like our 707 horsepower? Rig? Yeah, that's right. It's a holiday rig painted just like Santa Slay. And this video was brought to you by our sponsors at Sinclair Oil. Fill your four-wheel sleigh at one of over 1,500 Sinclair stations in 29 states in the West and Midwest. Sinclair prides itself on offering top-tier gasoline with DinoCare fuel additive in all octane fuels, not just premium fuel. DinoCare is an additive that helps reduce engine deposits, which translates to better fuel economy and lower engine maintenance costs over time. Sinclair Gas is also a Tier 3 fuel, which meets the EPA standards for lower sulfur emissions, which makes the air a little cleaner. Between now and Christmas Day, you can win 50 cents off per gallon, up to 15 gallons, if you go to SinclairOil.com slash the fast lane. Users of the DinoPay smartphone app connected to a Sinclair Mobile Advantage account could win up to 70 cents off per gallon. To all of our viewers across the nation and across the world, we at TFL and Sinclair wish you horsepower for the holidays and a happy new year. So I think some people would say, well, why are you comparing this, which is technically a mid-sized truck or pickup, mm -hmm. to these other two, which are in a new class, small pickup. And I think the reason's simple, because a lot of you out there asked for it. I mean, a lot of people did. Yeah. And on top of that, they are similar in terms of their design because this is a unibody construction. However, unlike those two, this does have a subframe as well, which helps it for load and for towing. Is that your second brake application? This is my second brake application. I'm noticing a couple of things. So first of all, there is not a special tow haul mode in the Ridgeline. No. There is normal sports sand and the mud. Uh -huh. I'm in normal. Right. And it's not downshifting by itself too much. Question about our towing vehicle because Macron says it's okay and I even have my telephone that matches the two Citroën. Uh, Yes, it is a Citroën 2 chevaux, 2 CV, but really the trailer weight we're using is a 4,000 pound load. We have our flat deck trailer that I've lightweighted. Yeah. It's a super legera. <laughs> uh, I pulled out the uh, ramps. Right. Uh, we got the weight down uh, with this uh, car here, which is Tommy's uh, gem, worth about 4,000 pounds. But we have a lot of drag, tandem axles, and this is a representative of a larger, maybe pop up camper a decent sized boat or another camping trailer. Now this is maximum load for the Ford, but both the Hyundai and the Honda can tow up to 5,000 pounds. And this V6 right now, well it's rolling at about 3,000 RPM and it's not super helping me to slow down. I'm hitting my brakes for the fifth time now. Okay, fifth time. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use the paddle shifters and downshift just um, just to see what happens, and I'm going to do the same thing in all three tracks. Okay. How about this? All right, go So let me downshift right now. I just went the third gear. You're going to see if it holds 60? Yeah, or 59 in this case. Okay. It is holding, dude. So the revs went up to about 5,500 RPM. Uh, I am in third gear. I manually selected it using the paddle shifter, which is fun. Uh -huh. um, it's actually dropping. And it's dropping. So I think that what's happening here is the large displacement engine, it's a three and a half, uh -huh. right? It has enough oomph to 
get some back pressure going and actually um, control the speed of the truck and trailer. We brought the Honda Ridgeline here because up until now, this was basically the only unibody, although mid-size, pickup truck. Yeah, it, it's a unibody, but it does have a subframe, and it was in a class of one because it was really unique in that class. So we're using it as a benchmark because we know how this vehicle runs, we know how it tows, we know how it feels. Uh, and this engine is a three and a half liter V6, 280 horsepower, 262 pound-feet of torque, made it to a nine-speed automatic transmission, and it's all-wheel drive that comes standard, and it has the VTM torque vectoring system attached. We're almost done. Yeah, we're almost down. This is the last part where there might be one more. Oh, here it is, dude. Okay. I have to. I have to hit so it. So this again. is nine. Yes. I think this is the last one. Yeah, so if you guys were to actually see the layout of going downhill and how it works, the last uh, mile or so it's a little bit flatter, is yeah. a little bit flatter and doesn't you know push us down that hill. So the final result for the Ridgeline, this new one, uh, with 4,000 pounds, nine brake applications on the way down. Let's see how it performs on the way up. That sounds like a great idea. Coincidentally, all three trucks we're testing today have different trailer brake controller solutions. The Ridgeline here does not have a factory integrated brake controller for the trailer. We are required to have brakes over 3,000 pounds here in Colorado. So we're using this Prodigy remote brake controller. The way it works is I plug in the trailer into the, this box right here and then the box itself goes to the truck. And then we have a little remote that Nathan is hooking up to be able to uh, have brakes. So as always, on the way up the I Gauntlet World Surface Towing Test, uh, we're starting at about 35 miles per hour. Uh -huh. I'm going to reset the trip meter and you uh, reset the Tell clock. Tell me when. And now. There we go. So what you're going to try to do now is get to 60 as quickly as possible, that is part of this, and then maintain 60 up the hill. You hear it grab? Yep. Feet that kicked in, yo! <laughs> oh, okay, so that was it. Yeah. But, you know, it's finding its torque at the upper RPM range. Yeah, right? it was, it, this is a very revvy V6. It, it, it likes to go higher rev for maximum output, and it doesn't mind getting there pretty quickly. So now the mountain is biting. Do you want to do a quick um, sound test? It's averaging around 67. 67 decibels? Yes. Okay, so it's not loud. 70 decibels or below is pretty quiet, actually. Right. Like you and I are talking probably at 85 decibels. Yeah. So this engine is just powerful enough, right? Right. The EPA rating is 21 MPG, which is about average. Uh, and. Uh, you know, 280 horsepower is okay. Yeah. You know, it's nothing maybe to write home about, but but that's adequate, I would say, for this vehicle. But you're maintaining 60? Yeah, just about 61, 60 right now. Okay. I'm trying to stay within limits, of course, but I'm asking everything from this engine and power plant and powertrain, so it's working hard. It is working hard. We are towing 4,000 pounds. Right? Yes. Okay, so its maximum is 5,000 pounds. And we've done its heaviest load before. This is not the first time we've towed with this very same Honda. We always check the suspension squad to make sure we understand how the truck will behave, and then we test it. Empty, the ridgeline was at about 34 and a half. Right now it's at about 33 and a quarter. So it's about an inch and a quarter of squat, which is not a big deal. About 400 pounds of tongue weight on this load, 4,000 pound trailer. Let's take it up and down the mountain. Uh, dude, I'm using 100% throttle. I can see our tunnels and I can see almost see the very end of this uh, uh, uphill. Yeah, well, we're doing pretty good in terms of time. So, so far we haven't lost a lot in terms of speed. Now this is where having Forced induction would really help, or having even a hybrid in some cases, not all cases. So having the ability, because the air is thin up here, the air density uh, really does affect the way naturally or normally aspirated engine performs. Yeah, dude, so you know what happened here? So I never really lost speed 
I maintained. Right now I'm once again maxed out on my throttle, but I never felt like I was losing speed. Right. So it's it's doing perfectly good. It. Um, I mean, I would love it to tug at the leash a little bit more. I'm sure other people would say that as well. All right, and we are we going may to have to shut down a little bit early here. Okay, tell me when. Let's see. Still maintaining. So it would be right about, tell me. I'll, I'll tell you in a second. There, now, let's call it a day because yeah. they just shut down this um, light here. Yeah. So what was it? 743, I think that's pretty close because we're of our slowdown and our distance. A quarter miles, uh, maybe Not less even. than a quarter mile. Yeah, we're far, we're 6.7, can you take a picture of this, please? Now, this direct competition between the Santa Cruz and the Maverick really begins, right? Right. And they're both compact little pickups, unibody. Right, they both have turbocharged engines. Yes, they do, uh, but this is a larger displacement of the two. Two and a half liters of displacement, four-cylinder turbo, 281 horsepower and 311 pound-feet of torque on premium fuel with an eight-speed dual clutch, right? That's right, you can get a naturally aspirated engine and a regular eight-speed automatic transmission in the base model, but this, this is the one you want if you're gonna tow a lot and if you want to haul butt. And it's rated to 5,000 pounds of towing, so let's see how it does. Dude, I've been waiting for this for so long. Santa Cruz on the Ike. You know, we did have a Santa Cruz before. Yes. And we did a lot with it, but one thing we couldn't do with it was tow because they didn't have the hitch ready for it. But now we do. We have proper setup, proper wiring, trailer brake controller. Let's do the downhill run right now. The same procedure, right? Measuring brake applications. Hit it. So I'm leaving the tunnel. As always, it's 50 miles an hour, which is the speed limit. And we're gonna be within, you know, between 60 and 50 miles per hour. That's right. So whenever it goes above 60, he's gonna apply the brakes and lower it down to about 50. So here's the thing, it's a little bit funny in my mind. Okay. Because Hyundai, when they developed the Santa Cruz, gave it, you know, first of all, this turbocharged engine, mm -hmm. lots of capability for towing, uh, which was 5,000 pounds, right? Uh-huh, here's your first brake application. Uh-huh. But, ooh, it downshifted once. Interesting. Just once. But And you had this in smart mode, right? Yes, but I was just about to say, there is no tow hole mode, which is special for towing. Which is, a little weird because the one competitor this really does have, which we're doing, the Ford Maverick does have a tow mode. Yeah, and an integrated controller for brakes on the trailer. Yeah, so very That's different. That's number two, dude. Okay, number two. Right now, all the parameters seem to be in line. The brake, I don't have any brake fade. After, what, six brake applications? Sounds like you're about to do seven. Seven! Let me see, just for a second. Let me downshift myself. Four. Third gear. You see that? It's I hope you guys it. can see it, but it, the refs came up. Yeah. And let's see if it'll hold me. It's holding better than it was without, uh -huh. that's for sure. So it is doable. It is doable. Um, it's still accelerating though. Yeah, well, we're at 60. 61 is when I prime my brakes. There you go. Okay, so no matter what the point is here, um, it still will go over that. This is a vehicle that's built more for efficiency than towing, obviously. And mostly, you know, kind of all around do everything, you know, chores, right? You guys saw what we used in the Ridgeline, which was our remote controller. Here in the Santa Cruz, this is an aftermarket brake control that was mounted here by your driver's left knee. This is the next solution you can do. Obviously, the Santa Cruz is pre-wired for wiring. It has a two-inch uh, receiver, seven-pin connector, but it requires this additional part, which could be anyway from $100 to $300, maybe. In the future, we will be testing the lesser brother, I should say, of this vehicle, which is actually one I'm more interested in. And that's the one that has the naturally aspirated engine and a regular eight-speed automatic transmission. I have a feeling that it's going to perform completely different than this vehicle. Yeah, that's number 11, right? That is 11. That's 11. I think the most we've ever done is 12. Yeah, and, and this goes for like the full-size and mid-size trucks. Yeah. Heavy duties is a whole different ball of wax because, because they have engine brakes, right. uh, exhaust brakes, etc. Actually, there's a, there's a mid-size that has that too. The, yes. uh, the Colorado, right? Yeah, the Colorado. Diesel, yeah. Which is impressive. I think 
after this point, we're good, right? We could be, but now it's still not over. I yep. have to apply it. All right. That's 12. 12 brick applications, so that maxes our max. <laughs> Matches yes. our max. Yes. I knew I meant that to say it the right way. Another bro dozer. So there you have it, guys. Uh, downhill performance, uh, 12 brake applications. 12. I still have no brake fade, so the brakes are still with me. Yeah. Uh, trailer brake controller is enabled and engaged, so we're using trailer brakes as well to slow down. Mm -hmm. But it's a little bit high on brake applications. As always, we're using our Gen Y hitch, and because on the Santa Cruz, the, the hitch receiver itself, the two inch receiver, is kind of low, we're going all the way up on this height adjustable hitch. This works okay. Dude, are you ready to accelerate in Santa Cruz on this world's toughest towing test? That's right, I'm all zeroed out, and so just tell me when and we will go. Okay, and as always, we're gonna start at 35, uh -huh. and I'm gonna mash the pedal. Okay. Are you ready? Yep. And now. Okay, so we're rolling. Aha, so the turbocharger is kicking in. Oh yeah, it's moving good. It revved up to about, you know, five to 6,000 RPM, and there, boom, I'm at 60. That was good performance. That was really good performance, actually. Yeah. So, acceleration is good. You know when I noticed uh, driving around town, uh, especially with the, this heavy tra trailer, which is about 4,000 pounds, right? Um, I, there was a little bit of lag. You know, it was, it, you know, I had like very little acceleration at first, and then boom, it kind of hits, hits you. So it's got a spool up, but it's also a uh, dual clutch. Yes. Um, and that's another thing to keep in mind that with the dual clutch sometimes especially in traffic I notice that there's a little bit of lag before it really clicks where it needs to go I really noticed that with German cars by the way um, Actually, if you notice it's been around 3,000 rpm to maintain 60 uh -huh. and it's not downshifting for me I mean, it's not hunting at all. I, I, it's just I, wonderful. I like that too. That is that is the mix-up for the brake applications yes. going down the hill we always measure suspension squat on our eye gauntlets because it gives us an idea about ride comfort and capability. Loaded with a trailer, I'm at about 32 and a half inches. Unloaded, it was about close to 33 and three quarters. So it's about an inch and a quarter squat, which is not very much with this trailer weight. So the suspension should behave nice, but that's why we're doing this test to find out for sure. Okay, so let me change lanes because we always measure sound. Uh, when we're in the middle lane, because right. this this right lane, the semi truck lane, is very rough, and there's a lot of potholes here. So let me change lane right now, okay. and let me let's uh, I'll shut up. It's a bouncing around between 60 and 64. Well, yeah. That's really good. Anything uh, below 70 decibels is a whisper. It's a mouse's yeah. whisper. The only th I heard, thing I heard was the hitch banging around a little bit. That it was, I heard over all this. Yeah, on one of the bumps, it definitely banged once. Yeah, it's interesting. This sort of sits in between the, the Ford and the Honda because it, it can tow as much as the Honda, yes. technically speaking. Uh -huh. um, its payload is very close to the Fords. Uh, and it's very curious because if you get different versions of any of these vehicles, you can change some of those numbers a little tiny bit. All right, we're getting close. Yeah, so this is uh, the finishing up the uphill section. So I'm still maintaining speed, no, no issue. Uh-huh. I'm at 60 miles per hour. Oh! And finally! It does this, but this is like the toughest part. This is the toughest part, dude. There it goes. Now it's begging for mercy. Okay, I'm ready to stop. Just tell me when. Yeah, I will let you know. And also, we'll take a snapshot of the fuel efficiency reading. Absolutely. Second light. And ready now. 752.07. Okay. That is fantastic. 6.7 mpg. Um, so, perfect run. It was just under eight minutes, which is. Benchmark the, time. Yeah, benchmark time. Uh, 6.7 mpg. Well, but we're breaking new ground here with new trucks, right? Yeah, that's that's a really good number near maximum load for this vehicle. So let's go jump into the Maverick now, shall we? Yes. So we know how the Ridgeline did it. Yep. 
now we know how the Santa Cruz behaved. Yep. Now it's time to put this Maverick on this ultimate test. It's going to be interesting because this is, in some ways, very different than the other two. Because, first of all, it does have a tow haul mode. It does have a trailer brake controller, which is integrated. I believe it's an option, right? Yes. It's got a different type of transmission than one. It's got a different engine than the other. You know, it's just it's like... It's not as powerful. No. Yeah. So, same procedure. I'm letting off. We're leaving the top of the mountain at 50 miles per hour. Let's see how it behaves. I am guessing, this is my prediction, that it'll be a little bit better than the Santa Cruz as far as brake applications. Yeah. Because uh, that's what kind of Ford engineers were talking about. They wanted to instill a little bit more of a truck flavor to this. They even said that they went to the F-150 and looked at some of the things it does when they were designing this. Yeah, so they didn't want to leave that off the table. Right. So here's my first brake application. Let's see if it downshifts. It did. So no kidding. it did downshift and now it's just over 3,000 RPM. Let's see if that helps us. So already behaving very differently than the other two pickups. Yes. And now the RPMs are building slightly, and I think it's helping us a little bit, actually. Oh, I think it's helping us a lot. Yeah. All right, guys, so you saw the premium powertrain in the Santa Cruz. Now this is the premium one in the Maverick. Two liters of displacement, turbocharged, and 250 horsepower and 277 pound-feet of torque on premium fuel, which we're using. That's right, and it has an eight-speed automatic transmission as opposed to the dual clutch that's inside the Santa Cruz, so a little bit different there. This one does have all-wheel drive, but you can get these with front-wheel drive. But why doesn't it have like a cover for the engine? Why uh, is it I, so ugly? Yeah, people complain about that. Also, look at this, there's paper under here. I'm guessing early production is gonna have this. Maybe they'll change it later. So to recap, nine applications with the benchmark, and that is the Honda Ridgeline and 12 applications with the Hyundai Santa Cruz. And this is, uh, because it's a turbocharged engine, the two liter like we talked about, it um, has what they call the 4K towing package. 4K just stands for 4,000 pounds. Right. That's the maximum load. And we're maxing it out. We are, we're at Today, maximum right there. load, yeah. So, no joke, once again, we're not easy on the Maverick. No, and what's the payload on this one? Because it's four-wheel drive, it's not quite as high as the two-wheel drive. Exactly, it's about 1,350 pounds, so it's less than the Santa Cruz, it's less than the Ridgeline, and this is my third. Third, got it, yeah. You know, I think it's taking longer for this thing to spool up to speed than yeah. the other two. Yeah, I can tell that too. Yeah. Um, I also like that I have the very visible coolant gauge. I have, of course, fuel and tack. Um, it's, I wish I had the transmission gauge. Mm -hmm. I know it's a compact truck and it's not a heavy duty. Right. I'm aware of that. Uh, but so far, the brake pedal feels great. Uh, so the brakes are behaving uh, just fine. My it's temperatures are in check. Correct. And we are now at one of the steeper parts of the brake. There are two unique features that you can get with the Ford Maverick, and that is trailer brake controller and tow haul mode. And here's the trailer brake controller on the left side. And let me show you the tow haul mode. There's number seven. Okay. We're getting close to being done, dude. You haven't downshifted manually on this, though. No, let's try that now. Okay. Uh, as soon as I get to about 57, that's what I've done with the others. And... <laughs> I, guess I have on. a knob. Dude, I have a knob. So I'm putting it in low. I don't think it makes a difference. Interesting. Oh, there, downshifted again, dude. Okay. So well, you're in low. Yeah, so I, I'm using the low gearing mode. It's not intuitive. No. You know, uh, the others had paddle shifters, right. plus and minus, everything was easy. Uh, this one is not as intuitive as that. There's no way that you can bounce to the gears with any type of shifter. There's just a knob, and all you can do is hit low. And we had to be below a certain RPM for it to kick in. Yeah, now let's go okay. back. All right. So it did hold me in low, actually. Once we dropped below yes. a certain RPM, yes. Yes. Okay, so that's not ideal, actually. I would have liked to know which gear I was in. Right. No, but it's not that accelerating any further at 55 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. So the final call, dude, is uh, nine brake applications for the Maverick. Let's review. Benchmark was nine. Yep. 12 for the Santa Cruz. Right. Nine for the Maverick. So the Maverick, I would say, performs more like a mid-sized truck and less on the braking and less as a compact. Now the big question is, how is it going to perform going uphill? It's a very good question. Fully loaded, the Maverick with the trailer. 
I'm just under 32 inches so I would say that was about an inch and a half of squat overall so comparable to the others Let's see how the EcoBoost does up the mountain. This is going to be very, very telling. Once again, 35 miles per hour. I'm going to nail it. Yeah, you ready? Away. Yep. Now. Here we go. All right. The trip meter is reset. Let's listen. All right. So she's working. Your foot all the way down? Yes. Okay. And we are now at 60. Bam. So, you know, that felt like the ridge line to me. Maybe even a little bit slower, and but it didn't struggle. It just took. It just. Was it just took its time. It right. wasn't as immediate, maybe. And in the Santa Cruz, something actually uh, different happens. First, there's not a lot of power, and then boom, the afterburners kick in. Yeah, and but it didn't take that long when you hammered it. Right. So I would say an acceleration with the trailer, the Santa Cruz out of these three, is just maybe a little bit snappier. I would agree, yeah. 100. So so far, you know, the transmission feels fine. The suspension, like we just mentioned on the way down, I would say definitely noticeably stiffer. Noticeably stiffer. Yeah. And it's not a bad thing necessarily for towing, but it's not as good if for like day-to-day -day driving, I would say. Both of the other two vehicles, the Santa Cruz and the Honda, are much more forgiving. Dude, let's measure the sound level and see how that goes. All right, here we go. So I saw it going between, say, 64 and 66, and then it would bounce a little bit to 67, but I think 66 was sort of where it was averaging. So that was interesting. The benchmark was at about 67, right? The ridge line. The Santa Cruz was quieter, yeah. noticeably, noticeably, by about quieter. 64 decibels or below. Yeah. Um, and this is matching the Honda in a way. Yeah. And what's interesting, this vehicle, when it's idling, for, especially from the outside, you can really hear it. Um, I think it's the injectors that make a lot of noise. So maybe there's not quite as much insulation like we saw under the hood. Yeah. You know, maybe there's not quite as much sound deadening there, but the cabin, the glass sounds quiet here. Yeah, it's okay, but I'm also hearing a lot of bumping and whatnot on the outside where I wasn't hearing it with either vehicle that competed against it. So it is a little bit what I would call of a primitive ride by comparison. I think that's a fair thing to say. There it is. The uh, coolant temperature did come up, but it's still within limit. Okay. And right, we're, we're close. Gonna... Tell me when. I'll tell you when. So, and stop the clock now. Okay, when you said stop the clock is actually when I stopped okay, the clock. Okay, Sorry. Okay. So at 52.39, you can add a second to it. 7.52. 7 was that identical to the Santa Cruz? I think that was pretty much identical. Yeah, but once again... 6.5 uh, MPG. 6.5. 6.5, okay. 6.5 MPG. So the, the beautiful part about this test was that the Maverick and the Santa Cruz were fully optioned models of their own kind. That's right. And they're comparable. Uh, we'll tell you guys the pricing right now. Yep. And we'll also need to decide who won. That is correct. <laughs> so dude, so the Maverick, Lariat, turbocharged, all-wheel drive, every option, just about 37 grand. Yeah. The Santa Cruz, 41 and a little bit more, so it's more expensive. Yes. The performance on the Ike, the Maverick, uh, lost a point because of its fuel efficiency. That is correct. But the Santa Cruz lost more points on braking. That's right, it lost three points, right? So right now, the Maverick is slightly winning. It matched the ridge line a little bit closer. Yeah. Now, how do we decide? Well, it's subjective, that's the other part. Now, one thing we can agree on is that the ride in the Ford was the worst out of the three. Now remember, we're not really scoring the ridge line because that's just the benchmark and we're comparing the other two to it. So compared to the Hyundai, I would say that the Ford rides much rougher and it was just very jiggly on the road, but it had good control of the trailer. Yes, and the Santa Cruz was comfy. I think the seats were a little bit more comfy. Much more comfortable. Uh, I felt a little bit more at ease driving it. It was leisurely. So your vote is for what? I'm gonna pick the Hyundai. Well, the Ford is four grand cheaper. Is that, does that change your mind? No. No, I like the way the power works in this vehicle. Yes, okay, brake applications were an issue, and it doesn't have any tow aids, really. I mean, it doesn't do anything like the Ford does. However, for me, in terms of comfort, driving comfort, power delivery, everything that it did, it did better than the Ford in my book. And I picked the Ford. 
and not because I'm a fanboy, yeah. but because it's trucky. It's got an integrated brake controller, it's, it's got does. a turbocharged power, which was enough. It's got, you know, a hitch, everything is set up a little bit better. So let us know what you think. One more thing, I know what to say. What? The Hyundai is a little bit more like a car, and the Ford is a little bit more like a truck. There you go, you're welcome. And I'm a truck dude. Stay with us, uh, follow this. We'll be testing more trucks very soon at tfltruck.com for 2022 Top Truck Competition.